What I love about the book is that it seems to be equal parts principles, like as in timeless principles regarding leadership and transition. And also, I love the fact that you pull a lot of current data, statistics, and trends. So in the early chapters of your book, um, here are some statistics that you lay out that I think are critical to understanding the importance of leadership transitions. And they do have to do with the increasingly transient nature of work today. So, for instance, you mentioned in the book that 91% of millennials expect to change jobs every three years. Um, while I would say that that is, that is definitely different than, say, our generation, Generation X, it's far different than the pre preceding generations, right? Um, Absolutely. And then you also mentioned that a job – and here's the reality. And I think this is part of the reason why you see um, – the likelihood of increasing job change. A job change that's a base salary increase between 10.1 and 20% over a typical 2 to 4% merit increase, which of course is increasing the job transitions. You then go on to say a long career with a single organization is unlikely, perhaps impossible. Today's leaders experience many transitions and transitioning well is critical in this environment. My question to you is, do you see this trend increasing or decreasing and why? Well, I, I wish I could be a prognosticator and tell you exactly what's going to happen. I don't think any of us, we all pretend we know, but we don't really know, right? But if the, the trend has been trending in this direction for a long time, this is not a brand new trend. Now, of course, anytime there's a crisis, uh, it, it think trends get accelerated. Very few get created, but they get accelerated. Of course, so the 2020-2021 pandemic crisis accelerated a lot of these trends. But um, in, 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 if I had to guess, and I think I can do this pretty safely, I don't think it's going to decrease. Uh, and the reason is that uh, some of the metrics in the book I talk about really are what's driving this, uh, the salary increases, the opportunity to uh, uh, work in different ways. You mentioned the previous generation. I mean, this is a great example. My father uh, and my, my, my mom and dad, they're in their you know, mid upper seventies. Um, when I went to college, the first thing they told me was pick a practical major. And the reason is because that's what you did. You, if you went to college uh, or you went to a trade school, you did something, but it was practical. You went to work in a practical company doing practical work. You got a two to 4% raise every year. You maybe got promoted occasionally. Most people change jobs once, maybe twice along their career. And the reason is that you were building a 401k. You were looking towards retirement. I mean, there was a, there was this selfish side of that, that, I mean, I don't mean it badly. There's a the selfishness looks differently today. There was this, um, this is what's better for me. That's how it worked back then. However, one of the key differences, and this is why I don't see it decreasing, one of the key differences today uh, that we did not see maybe in a previous generation was the loyalty to a company and the loyalty to an organization or a leader. Uh, our entire culture has moved away from that. It's a, not a culture of honor and loyalty anymore. And again, we could pontificate why and if it's good or not, but the reality is it's true. And so if you can make more money by changing jobs, people will. Uh, if you can get a promotion, if you can, you know, uh, the whole thing is going to end. It, it just continues to drive forward that way because it, it creates more opportunity for the individual. And we are now in an individualistic society, right? Not a corporate society, not an organizational society. So I don't think it's going to decrease. Now, how much more can it increase? I mean, if you think about a millennial uh, currently changing and they're expecting to change, it doesn't mean they are, but another metric, you know, so three, you know, three, every three years, Another metric, though, Will, said that if you look at the entire workforce in, in general, they change jobs every 4.1 years. And that's an actual change, not they hope to change. So they're changing at a minimum 4.1. They want to do it even faster. So I don't think it's going to decrease. Now, the real question is, could you even, you know, companies, though, also have to hire you. So you may want to change jobs, but if no one wants to hire you, you can't change if you're unhirable. Changing every year makes you pretty unhirable. Uh, you have a history of that. You, it becomes problematic. I think it's going to have to settle out somewhere, but I bet it settles around three to four years. And so that's where we'll find ourselves, which is where we are now. Yeah, which is a huge difference from the 30 to 40 years that, again, right. preceding generations experience. Right. Well, think about this, Will. I don't dig as much into this in the book because it's mostly about the point leader and how you transition in, how you deal with the team, how you you know practically, tactically do all that. But you know, just from an organizational, organizational perspective, Think about how detrimental it is to a company to have that level of turnover. 
Uh, you're trying to maintain a culture. You're trying to maintain some semblance of team and chemistry. It's impossible. Uh, the amount of money companies are spending today on just recruiting and training, and they can't retain, but they have to replace. So the recruiting and training budgets have got to just be massive now compared to where they were a decade or so ago.